Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and time for a quick muskie and striper gear video. I was hoping really to get on the water this weekend and break in the new motor, but as you can see... So I've had a lot of requests on the basic gear for muskie and striper fishing, so let's start with the baits first. As most of you know from the videos, I use a lot of stick baits when I'm trolling. This one here just happens to be a 9 inch uh, black perch to grandma. Use a lot of 10 inch jakes as well. Caught a lot of fish with that black perch pattern. Very popular and they'll typically run probably about uh, 6 to 8 feet anywhere uh, 60 to about 75 feet of line. What you want to do too, you want to make sure that you cover all the water column. So I started going a little bit deeper this year and this actually is a tough shad. It's in a clown pattern and I just had this painted up by Scott Davis. You can see another signature series there. Did a great job on that. The reason why I went with the clown pattern is because this Joe Booker depth raider here and I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before. And of course after is now. Of course another signature series. Caught a lot of fish on that pattern. Unfortunately, the tough shad didn't have the clown pattern. So I've got them to paint up a couple of those. Those are great. They're actually both deep divers. The tough shad, of course, go even a little bit deeper. Um, of course, we have the glitter perch, another very popular pattern. And this was a bait done up by Fred Bowen from the Musky Boys. Nice glitter perch there. I ran that a lot last year. Had a few falls with it, but you can see how well it's held up. Big heavy coating of shellac. It has a little bit of hook crash, but not bad at all. Hoping to catch one Fred on this this year. Beautiful looking bait. And of course, when we're in a little shallower water, I always like to run a little shallow water. Joe Booker, a little thin bait there. Casting. Of course, we use everything from the smaller baits in the spring. This is a little Booker tail here, a little buck tail. And of course, we've got the great big monstrosity, the blue fox, double 10. But as you can see, I actually cut one of the blades off here just to make it a little easier to pull through the water. Caught a few muskies on that. I like the blade baits when I'm casting. As well as the, the bulldog from Muskie Innovations. This is a smaller guy here. Of course, we've got the big pounder bulldog. That probably weighs about a pound or so. Great bait as well. That's kind of the basics as far as uh, trolling and casting. I, I know people buy a lot, a lot of musky baits, but you get a half a dozen or a dozen or so, you're probably good to go initially. So now let's get into the leaders. Now I make my own leaders and this is a casting leader here to start with. It's uh, generally about 12 to 14 inches. Make it out of 150 pound fluorocarbon. And what I do as well is I I crimp. I know some guys actually tie off their, their hardware. That's your own personal preference. You can see that I leave a little tag end behind the crimp and actually mushroom that as well. A little safety feature in case the crimp does slip. It will hopefully catch on the mushroom cap. Uh, make sure you do use the good ball bearing swivels. They're probably a couple hundred pounds at least rating and a good snap as well. So the trolling leader generally make that about 36 inches at a minimum and the reason why we do that is to keep the weed guard well away from the bait so when the weeds get caught on that it doesn't interfere with the action and a muskie or striper will still hit it so i'll show you the weed guard momentarily this is our weed guard setup you can see we have the bait 36 inch trolling leader and where it snaps onto the main line i've attached a weed guard now i simply use a old treble hook of course you have to cut the points off and also the barb this is a great tip to make sure that your bait runs weed free sort of can save you a lot of headache your largest purchase will probably be your rod and reel but you don't have to go crazy here now my favorite is certainly the Shimano Dakota it's a 600 line counter a couple things that I would definitely look for in a trolling reel is the line counter itself those prove to be invaluable also, you certainly would want a 20 to 25 pound drag on them. There's a lot of force on these baits when you pull them through the, through the water. So make sure you don't skimp on that aspect. It's got a great action as well. And this one here I've had for probably about 10 years and it's held up extremely well. As far as the rod's concerned, this is simply a fiberglass Shimano TDR trolling rod. 
you can you can get the more expensive ones if you like I actually prefer this glass one here they, they make the Taylor Taylor I believe it's called uh, lots of other good uh, rods out there as far as Okumo or um, Berkeley there's all kinds out there get what you can afford or, or what you like but as far as a rod is concerned I would not go any lighter than a heavy action uh, again you're pulling big baits through the water if you're dealing with big fish make sure you don't skimp on that rod length I like the eight foot I don't know if you need any longer with that you probably could go seven and a half or eight and a half those are kind of the uh, the happy uh, mediums for me so now I did go a little more expensive with the casting outfit you can see here that I picked up an Abu Garcia Toro S uh, bait caster specifically made for musky fishing and I think that just came out last year this is a left-handed model it's got a lot of drag on it and it is a very smooth um, working reel love it um, the mojo musky rods from st croix the power on it is extra heavy i quickly learned when i started casting that if you have a, a lighter power it just does not work the rod's like a wet noodle in your hands and you quickly tire i also went with an eight and a half foot rod because the figure eights it's a lot easier to do those uh, at boat side so Make sure when you're doing a little bit of casting, you get yourself a longer rod, at least eight foot, probably eight and a half foot, um, and go with the extra heavy power. I certainly enjoy that. A little more money, but well worth it. One other piece of kit I'd like to show you is my striper gear for the Miramichi River. Up there, there's a different set of regulations. A lot of small little schoolies up there in a the three to five pound class, but there's also some big monsters up to 30 and 40 pounds. So I do fish with musky gear up there as well. And this is my Revo Toro winch. Again, great working reel, has a lot of power in it. So it can handle those big guys or even the small ones. And I use my smaller musky rod. This is a seven and a half foot uh, Shimano Compri. It is the extra heavy power as well. So it can certainly handle all those schoolies to the big uh, mama bears. And as far as baits are concerned up there, you can only use single barbless hooks. So guys will typically use this type of swim bait, almost has a paddle on the tail, or they'll use eel imitations. There's a ton of fish up there and it's a great fishery. So if anybody hasn't uh, had the opportunity to experience that, I certainly would encourage you. And that's it for the basics. Now let's pray for no more snow.